All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Two Planker Podcast. I'm your host, Ethan Schaefer, and today we have Rudy Lepine with me, and we're going to talk about his film, Psychoactive, and Rudy, thank you for being here. Well, thanks a lot for having me, dude. I'm pretty out to, to chat about the movie and how it all went down. Absolutely. So this might be the first episode that we're doing with video. Uh if we don't, if I end up cutting out the video, I might still leave this in, but we'll uh, we'll try it with video. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a heads up for that. So we'll see how that it looks. Yeah, no, it looks good. It looks good. So before we get into the movie, I want to talk a little bit about you and where you're from because you're an East Coast guy, moved out west, yeah. but you're in Canada. So could you tell us a little bit about like? growing up and where you're from originally and a little bit about like your childhood yeah well originally i'm from quebec like you mentioned and i'm from this little town called like pretty close to sherbrooke called eastman and i grew up there like till i was like about 13 i stayed in that area and i skied at my own resort where my dad was like uh, he was like this ski school like director i would say he was like organizing all the ski school at the ski resort and both my parents are ski instructors so i grew up on a ski resort with my little brother and yeah we just skied like every weekend as much as we could and i started at at like at like a year old my mom was like carrying me on the ski hill so yeah like i started it from the get-go and you're on the east coast you know like the tiny hills like i skied that like pretty much my whole life till i was like 17 i would say and then i moved out west so yeah like little hills is where i where my heart's at for sure absolutely i know a lot about that so did you start off did they force you into racing moguls like did you go into park how like what did you um, first start out with well, both my parents made me and my brother do all the lessons, like, you know, all the, like, ski levels with ski instructors. Like, my parents are both in what, like, in Canada, it's called AMSC and CSIA, and they, they're they both, like, very, like, eye level in that stuff. Like, in my, one of my big brothers is, like, a, a super good instructor. I think he's, like, third in, in the world or something like that. He's best in Canada is all I know, and so like in the family it's a lot of that and they pushed me into racing my mom pushed me into racing a little bit like I was I'm a really good like skier just like carving and like how to like yeah you know how to ski like I skied a lot before I skied the park and my big brother one of my big brothers just is a snowboarder and got me into the park I snowboarded a bit and then he for Christmas one year he just got me a pair of twin tips and then I I pretty much stopped snowboarding then for some reason it hurted my knees and I I just skied after that I I'm a skier at heart so I kept skiing I think that's yeah. why yeah yeah and did you have any I mean because we're here talking about a video at, eventually so did yeah. you have any video influ- influences growing up yeah like when I moved out of that area, I went more to the east, even like I like about six hours east of Montreal. I moved there with my family and uh, there I picked up like rollerblading and I filmed a lot of that. And then that translated to skiing and I got like the first GoPro, you know, and like every kid, I just like I did what I could with my with my GoPro in my own resort and and. I, you know, like in the summer, I tried to pick up gigs, like take photos for companies and stuff like that. So it's been like a passion of mine, like for quite a while. But like I, when I was young, like a young kid, I didn't have any like passion for it. I would say I was more like a skier than, than anything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you said that you moved out West at 17. Yeah. Like what was that decision like and what were you thinking leading up to it like have you had did you always look at whistler as like oh i gotta get out there have you ever visited before like what led up to that decision no actually one of my homies alec uh, from montreal just went to whistler this summer like previously before just uh just before i I moved to whistler and uh he went in the summer for the glacier when the camp of champions were still a thing and all that stuff and 
uh, told me it was amazing. And then I finished high school when I was 17. And then I just like had nothing to do. So I, I moved out west and my mom pushed me for it. She was like, you should go try it. Like you love skiing a lot. So just try to go do it for a little bit. And then I've been here on and off for like seven years now. So yeah, <laughs> I, I've been saying it's my last year for a few years, but for a few years. But. Yeah. And did you go there with like a job arranged? Like, did you go to school out there? Like, what was your plan for when you actually arrived? Honestly, at first it was really like, uh, oh, let me go ski and like live the ski bomb life for a year. And then I, I spent like three years just like working in kitchens. Like I found a passion for working in kitchens, like for real. Like I started as a dishwasher, but it lasted like one winter. And then after that, I was a, like a cook with everyone else. And so I did three years of that. And then um, eventually uh, went back to Quebec and all that. And then I met my partner. So I've been in Whistler like on and off, like working in kitchens like for seven years now. And just like, I love it. Like it's a lot of experience that you can get and like you can like push forward in kitchens. And, and then the skiing is obviously fun. Like these days we've been skiing like, you know, six hours a day and we just like walk to the chairlift it's like super fun so whistler is like definitely if you're in the right spot for the winter it's it's great yeah so yeah so like i mentioned before we got started i read the article about you is called uh rudy lapine getting your bell rung and that's by zach fenn so he so he's kind of i'm using him as kind of the outline for uh for your life story so it it's all matched up so far. And, yeah. and, you, and you mentioned in that article that you were working in kitchens and then all of a sudden your Instagram started blowing up. Is that how you remember everything? Yeah, I mean, me and Zach had like a, a chat about how like everything went went down like in terms of like ski career. And I guess it just was obviously at first it was definitely Instagram, Instagram related. Like, um. Yeah, my Instagram blew up as they called it, and yeah. <laughs> I just, I just kept, I just kept putting like videos online. I had like lots of fun, and like I was working in kitchen, so I didn't have any plans of like going somewhere to film a like a video part or anything. I was just like skiing as much as I could. Like these two, three seasons, I like just posted on Instagram and did nothing else. I'd ski like. 130 140 days a season and i'd work full-time throughout that because i was working at night so i was just like filming on my phone and then posting it i'd post like a few times a week and it obviously grows that when it that when that happens and whistler like is surprisingly pretty empty with like social media content so it just like worked good and like i met the omis from simple with uh, Jake Carney, Ryan Brown, all these guys. So we skied together and that was like good times. The boys like slowed down after, but I heard they're making a comeback this year. So some people. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, yeah, should watch out for that. Yeah, I mean, so could you tell us a little bit more about Simple as a crew? Like, were you there from the start or did you join in something that already existed? I uh, I totally joined something that was already existed, like, existing like, the i met ryan who was like who was the f- like filmer editor for like simple on w- in whistler black park and um, we just like ski together he saw my stuff on the on the internet and we like ski together and jake carney is like a super nice guy so like he gets along with everybody but we edit pretty good and he's a he's the homie and we just skied and all these guys have been making like videos for like man i don't want to like some like diehard fans are gonna hate me for it but like i don't know how long you've been making videos but it's been like a long time and it's just the year i arrived in whistler is the year jake and ryan made that video i think it's called dead kind that was like that one simple video that like blew up blew up and then in whistler like in Whistler, you make a little video that works. It like it you get like pretty popular, and the boys made the most popular video 
of that season, you know. So it was like they were they were the kings of the of the black park, you know. Back yeah. In the day. yeah, it was sick. That's tight. So you join up with them, and then yeah. and then yeah. as as the legend goes, I mean, from the article it says that Magnus was like a huge next step for you. Yeah, because like. I filmed with the guys from Simple on the glacier in the summer that one season. And that same season, the Magnus came to to the glacier. So we all skied together and it was like Magnus, like like I talked to Zach about, like he really just made me realize like if you want to do something with skiing, you just got to start thinking about it now and like start putting shit in motion. Cause I was just like skiing. Like I told you like skiing and working and not doing much. And he was like, just like, make sure that's what you want to do. Like you could see, I was like just doing that for fun, but I guess he saw some potential and the conversation just woke me up to just, just the fact like if I want to do something I can, and I just got to like start working a little bit for it. And, so that's what I did. I I started like thinking of it more not as a business, but just trying to make it like sustainable for me and my friends if we want to make videos that we can get a little bit of money so we can like at least afford to make these trips happen without taking it in our pockets. You know, we don't end up making any money at the end of the day, but we we love making it and it's like it's been very fun like the last few years yeah i've been great just just thinking of it a bit more seriously allows you to do a lot more stuff you know so yeah yeah 100 percent. so did you have uh any sponsors before then i was on armada like on and off it was a weird thing like i didn't i didn't have a team manager or anything so it was like just i had contacts at armada and was getting some stuff but uh, when I opted on ON3P, that was like my first like actual ski sponsor. And uh, Goyaki Yerba Mate is like my first professional contract. So I had like an actual contract with them and it was like a big step. I was like super happy about like making something happen yeah, yeah. out of skiing, so yeah. That's tight. And when did so when did you get in the fold with Owen 3P? Um, I would say the summer of 2019, I think. Just before COVID, because yeah, like I went to Switzerland that summer to ski and I was in Oud just before. So I stopped in Portland to like see the guys at the factory and chat and whatnot. And they let me they let me leave with a pair of 102s. I if I remember well, and I just skied those for like the summer there in Zermatt. And then when I came back home, I skied those. And and after that, it just like organically kept going. And it's been like, they've been taking care of me and my friends now for three seasons. And it's been like nothing but good, good, good vibes, I would say. Yeah. Oh. Yeah great brand you know like i it's cool to work with a brand that's like small so you can like talk to people who are in charge you know yeah yeah, yeah. i've been enjoying that a lot and did they get you I, I don't know the timeline of all the videos in my head but like were you yeah. a part a part of any of those on 3p videos like one two three four like any of those or was that before no, you got on? no me that was all before i got on like honestly since the pandemic has happened like a lot of like not a lot of stuff has happened on on it side i feel like like on a lot of ski company side but on on their side like they haven't made like a team movie a lot of their boys have been like skiing street like none of the guys have stopped but yeah i saw so technically we're working i don't know if i'm allowed to say this or i can ask the omi later but um we're working on owens on 2p6 right now so like a bunch of the guys are just working on that so that should be like really nice dude i'm looking forward to that because those are those are like seriously some of my favorite videos those are so good yeah, yeah exactly so that'll yeah. be nice sweet so so you got on just as the bunch guys were leaving pretty much right like two years before that but yeah like it got serious with o3p as the bunch guys were leaving and like i know for a fact it 
freed a lot of the budget you know like uh-huh. a lot of the stuff just like fell in place where we were like at the right place at the right time and i think like that's the thing is like canada's our art market for that company because like the doll the american dollar so i compared to ours it gets so expensive for canadians so i think it's like they they're trying to market it and like we're really like all around like i live in bc but i'm french canadian so like i got the whole like you know i feel like i'm I, i'm just very lucky in terms of like where i am i'm the only one here and like you mm-hmm. know yeah i appreciate it a lot that entropy is like trying to push it to canada like it's 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 rough like canada is like the dollar is super low so <laughs> yeah 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 and so when those guys left like did did you guys see it coming like being behind the scenes and knowing those guys like did you know that they were all gonna leave at the same time i mean i'm not gonna lie some of us knew like it before for sure but before it actually like came out online but um no, like I wasn't really expecting it, honestly. Like I thought they were a great match with O3P, and it's like a big financial risk to start a ski company. But I think they have a vision and they're going all in for it. So I'm like always happy to see that happen. You know, I wish I I wish I I, I was organized enough to make stuff like that happen. But uh, I'm still too young, I think, to. Uh, start a ski company i also have no clue what i would be doing so <laughs> no i i like skiing too much to start working on all that stuff <laughs> and how, how old how old are you now i'm 24 i'm 24 i'm not that yeah. young but you know uh, yeah i think i think the boys are like a bit older than that so yeah and they're like trying to securing like secure like a job into in the industry as like they keep skiing you know like i think a lot of people are like not super happy and like i mean i miss them street skiing obviously as like a urban skier like i miss seeing echo go hard in the streets but they'll probably do some again at one point you know yeah yeah i mean you never know what the future is gonna hold yeah exactly yeah so you said after they left all of a sudden there's more money to go around or like that money is now being redirected. So what did that look like for you? Did, were, was that something that you thought or was that something that was told to you? Like, Hey, like if you want to do something, let's do it. Or were you like, Oh, now's my opportunity to ask. Um, I've kind of just been, how can I say this? Like I kind of like, it was really timing wise was like, it was, it was perfect like i was planning on doing like an like a bigger scale urban video and it just like magnus and ackle were like we were talking about like they were trying to help me make a proposal to ski company and all at the same time as they were planning their own stuff you know they were like trying to teach me how to just like put myself out there as like a compliment to brands so they can do more that way like everybody benefits you know and all that stuff and so I don't know where I'm going with this honestly but yeah like just just like I feel like it was like it was the right time I had like all this help and just like I sent my stuff and I, we weren't asking for a lot, you know, like we asked for money, but it's basically just to pay for the expenses. So like, it just like, it's, it's pretty worth it for every brand to give a little so they can get a little, you know, exposures are, is worth a lot in a way. So, yeah, you know, yeah. And did you have the idea for psychoactive already in your mind or did you just want to do, you wanted to do a movie and you didn't know what it was going to be? Like you didn't know the theme yet or anything like that. Like, did you know, or did Um, you not know yet at that point? I I knew some of it, like psychoactive was a weird thing. It was like, it it was really like a, how can I, like a quarantine idea, you know, like it was really like, it started with like, I, I like the sound of the word psychoactive. And then I was just like, I 
started digging more into how I could like make it like a, a bit different than all the other ski movies and then I I wrote down stuff I had lots of time like I wasn't working for about two months and so I just wrote down a lot of ideas and I tried to like make it into like a cohesive concept and then and then I just add that on paper like a rough it's hard to like put a movie down on paper before you have anything and ask for money but I had like this rough idea of what I wanted a project to like represent and showcase you know like I knew what I wanted it to feel like and what I what it was going to be able to present for companies so that way I could kind of tell them like hey, it's going to be something in the lines of this you know but mm-hmm. yeah it's 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 really hard to just like put it out on paper like our next project we don't have as much of a concept and it's going to be hard to just like you know put it on paper and and make it happen you know yeah i mean yeah, yeah so let's let's talk about the movie so how did you think of the theme of the movie like what was going on in your life leading up to it like I, I have obviously I have what you've said before, but like I just want to hear in your own words, like yeah, what experiences yeah. in your life like drove you to make this type of movie? Well, I, I mean it's an urban skiing movie, right? Like I just wanted to, I like I'm a big fan of like snowboard movies as well, and I just wanted to make an urban skiing movie that feels a bit more like a snowboard movie. Like I'm not saying by any means that's what we did, but that's what I was shooting for a little bit. And me and Tristan, Sony and Cam, we did, um, he, he does a lot of work with 16 millimeter cameras and all that stuff. And it's been like really cool to learn and like experience with that stuff with him. And I'm very happy about like the aesthetic of the film. So for all that stuff, we were like kind of working together to make it like all cohesive and make the like style of the video very like like you know with our cameras make sure everything's like perfectly fit but for the team of the video like i mean it was like the pandemic i didn't know what i was doing much like i was in whistler but nothing was happening and i had made a street video but it was like just me alone and i've been wanting to make one with like a bunch of my friends and psychoactive was kind of like my opportunity to do that i feel like so Mm -hmm. that how it came about like the yeah i don't know how how i'll get to like yeah absolutely yeah so where did like the head injuries come into play for your life and then also translating that those emotions into a movie yeah so like basically my head injuries were something a bit later like it didn't come into play while I was making the well perhaps it did but it wasn't a thing when that happened before I thought of the movie it's Mm -hmm. like as we were shooting for the movie I kept hitting my head skiing spots and like it there was this one spot that's in the movie I we have to look like which time stamps but Mm-hmm. I hit the wall like straight on the corner and I hit my head and I'm not wearing a helmet like a like a dummy and I that one really like that was the last spot I hit that season because after that I was like absolutely destroyed like I it, and I was lucky that my forehead like kissed it but my my head kept like kept going past the wall because I think I would have cracked open my head like it was a really big impact and um the head injuries just I kept hitting my head a little bit and a little bit and when I'm kind of repeating myself here but no yeah no problem I'm trying to say I'm trying to sit in one go like I kept hitting my head and then the summer that followed it was really hard for me to like go back to my regular job after street skiing all year like i was very like impatient and like i just not like myself you know like everybody gets impatient and everybody has bad days but i was having a lot of them and my partner was just telling me she was like you gotta like 
either take a break from work or like see see someone because like something's happening you're like it feel you don't feel like yourself you know and whatnot so mm-hmm. so then I got checked by like a psychotherapist and did a bunch of tests and yeah like he told me brain injuries were probably the cause of all this stuff and that like there's a few things you can try like I didn't want to like take any like medicum like uh, pills or anything like I don't know the term in English but you know like I was trying to go with no medication and just you know like trying to find a, a solution for my brain without that and I found my psychotherapist recommended this thing called neurofeedback and uh, it's just basically from what I understood it just it helps redistribute like the the alpha waves in your brain like so basically my nerve like my psychotherapist was saying that I have low frequency waves in my brain like and that's that happens when your brain gets it so often like let's say I hit my head on the right side the brain will slow down the wave on this side so it allows the brain to heal but i've hit my head so often that when like now my brain the whole thing is like super low frequency so it heals but like there's nothing to heal anymore so like what neurofeedback does is just like reactivate those waves where i can like function in a more like normal way like i didn't have like any major major issues you know but it was just like everything was a little harder and yeah you, you know i do wear my helmet like most of the time but like you know it should be an every 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 time thing you know especially mm-hmm. skiing street so yeah so i mean for the people that weren't familiar with that concept in the movie that might have seemed random that i asked that but i read that in the interview and you mentioned that so it seemed like you had the idea for the street movie and you had the Mm -hmm. like the idea of the general themes but then that first year of filming when you're getting hurt that's where it really solidified as like okay it's gonna be a movie about this pretty much yeah exactly about that like because i because at first i wanted it to be a movie about like dealing with all these emotions you live as a street skier you know but as i saw that like most of my emotions about street skiing like were related to my head injuries like i I felt some ways sometimes after like not landing my trick and it was like mainly because i was like physically exhausted because it was a lot to like for my brain to like go through that stuff so like i even took the time stamp down like at 8 18 in the movie i like it's after a spot in the first year and i like bang my head and it's like something that's called it banging but some people do that like when they can't take the pressure anymore and like i i dealt with that the first year like quite a bit and that was rough because it's like i don't know it was like just stronger than me i would say in a, in a way like i had to like take the pressure out some somehow and like that really injured my head a lot more obviously and uh, after that i was like i had to like the summer that followed that i really like my doctor like made sure i understood the gravity of like the situation you know like head injuries maybe I didn't understand how important it was before that, you know? So mm-hmm. after, after that summer, I really like fucking understood that it's no joke. And there, there's a lot of precautions. Like I can and should take. So I'm gonna pull that up. So we're trying something new. We're trying to do the screen sharing. Mm-hmm. So, so, so viewers, please bear with us if this is not working. So you're seeing it on your end, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is the this is the timestamp you were talking about. So that is in sort of like a moment of frustration you're talking about. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that's the scans for from the neurofeedback at the at the psychotherapist. So Tristan came with the sixteen millimeter, and we shot some of the 
some of this stuff like at the doctor because it's a session it's basically you just put this helmet on your head and you put your headphones with like mind numbing sounds i would say and you just you just try to meditate through it and this right here this right there exactly wow so yeah and then i mean wow adding the visual element to this podcast really makes it we're really able to do a lot more so yeah yeah for yeah sure. so this right here what are we looking at right here with the um I, so what we do well i for all the people listening to just audio the just, video clip the video clip is is rudy basically hitting his own head in frustration and then the the brain scanning is kind of i don't even know it's like kind of like what you see with the motion tracking where they have like the dots all over someone's head but this right here, this is a, a chart that shows some sort of analysis. And so what are we looking at here? So to be honest, what I sent to Zach for the interview here was like some pages of my diagnosis that are not like too personal. And like mm-hmm. the scan, I honestly do, do not know what it means, but it all is described into written word as well. And mm. um, I know that like, most of my head injuries were all to the right side so a lot of it like was affecting my my cognitive behaviors and all that stuff so like i don't know what this exact scheme means you know like sorry to 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 break no yeah it's all right yeah yeah. but like um yeah, like my my diagnosis is like a twenty five page diagnosis where everything is like laid out how like the injuries, like the brain waves, or like lesser on one area, not in the other, and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, like I, I obviously um, didn't want to send like all that stuff to Zach. So well, Zach got it, but I told him like what to. Uh, I could yeah. share. I could share with you. It's not a big deal, but it's not something I want to have to like you know have on the internet if that makes sense. Absolutely, yeah. So we'll get back to the screen share in a second. So one quote from that article that stuck out to me is like, you didn't want to make a documentary about mental health issues. Like you wanted it to be a theme, but you didn't want it to be the focus of it. So do you feel like you guys, you achieved that? I feel like I did. Like, as if you yeah. don't think of it too much, it's like a ski movie. Like I don't want, like it's still at the end of the day, it's a ski movie. Like I'm not, I'm not a documentary guy and like, as much as I'd like to share my story and like really talk through it, you know, and like do like what we're doing here. It's like really hard for me to like put in words how hard it was when my head injuries were troubling me, you know? So like, I don't know how to describe it like that in a movie, but Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be subtle enough where if you want to think of it, like you can clearly see there's a team going on but it's nothing like that's it doesn't change the movie like i'm pretty sure it's not too far from what i would have done if i didn't have any like sort of message to go around you know absolutely yeah I, and that's what i thought yeah. too i mean we talked about this before like my thoughts versus what you're intending i think that what I saw was, was a project that expressed a lot of different moods. You know, it opens up very dark, obviously, but then there's parts of the movie where it's like pretty upbeat and just hype, you know? And so I thought that there was a lot of, it went back and forth between kind of that uh, almost like optimistic feeling. And then like those dark feelings too. So I thought that it it was just a lot of like that going back and forth and showing, you know, it, it wasn't, one mood the whole time it was a lot of different moods yeah no i'm i'm glad you i'm glad you saw that like that's that was for sure the 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 idea and the goal to like showcase different moods just like with the music the visuals you know make the make the shit look really like what's the word i'm looking for but make the shit feel very like troubling when it when it doesn't go well like i have a few timestamps here like there's i think at 908 i that spot i'm skiing i I broke my elbow there at the end of the season and that shit was like the end of the movie for me and uh all right let's see 908 908 yeah 
<laughs> well, yeah. while we're while we're on the image of the rat, so what was up yeah. with the with the? It's actually a mouse, but what's up with the mouse eating the mouse? Because that's a recurring that's some recurring B roll. Was that B roll that you found online, or did you guys no, see that no, happening? No, no. I actually saw that happening. Um, my girlfriend has a cabin in the Squamish Valley, and we just got there on a weekend and there's like this bathtub that obviously is not in function anymore and uh her dad was like yo rudy come see this shit there's there's two mice in there in it there was many mice in the in the bathtub stuck and, and just i started filming them didn't think it was gonna go for their body but then did and i thought i thought it could represent a lot of things I mean, you know, I thought it just looks cool as well, but um, yeah, personally, I like I don't want to see what it represents, quote unquote, because I don't want to sound like a like a douchey artist, but yeah, you know, like I just thought it it fit well. It it was troubling, you know, and 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 whatnot. Yeah, the rat, not the rat. I keep on saying the rat. The mouse footage is really dark. I like it. It really because you use it at the beginning too, and it really sets the tone for the whole movie. Yeah. And, uh, so, all right, so let's let's play let's play on this uh, on this clip. So that spot, that spot, I fell forward and uh, blew my elbow, and I had to get surgery and all that stuff. That's why that clip I'm not too happy about, but yeah, it was a uh, it was a good day still. Honestly. So the clip that you guys included was just you hopping over the closeout. But what, so what what were you going for when you busted your elbow? I was going for front two, honestly. But I I I like that one. I just didn't like my arms. Honestly, if I did that with no arm flapping, I would probably keep it. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so I I kept trying. Like I could have, I I should have stopped because it wasn't really working like how I wanted it. And, I just fell forward and my, my my elbow blew out. Like I dislocated the elbow, I shattered my radial head, and then I think I got a fracture in my coronoid. So I think it, they call the injury the terrible triad, whatever that is. And mm -hmm. yeah, my elbow my elbow's been doing good though, so I'm pretty happy about it. So that so that was during the first the first uh, well the other thing about this that we haven't really mentioned I guess we've kind of hinted at it but this was a two year project that was intended yeah. to be one year right yeah at first it was at first it was and, and yeah like the first year was like a bit a bit of adjustment it was like the pandemic on the east coast as well and you know in Quebec we had curfews and all that shit happening so at 8 p.m you had to be in your house so we did shot quite a bit because we don't usually shoot at night anyways but it was definitely like mm -hmm. it was a weird time you know and we got like quite a few good clips but it wasn't like what we wanted it to be so we just shot another year and second year we shot with tristan so that really first year we shot with our Omi Etienne in Quebec shout out to Etienne he's the man and the uh, second year we shot with Tristan Moore but still shot with Etienne I would say a third of the season so because mm -hmm. their first year was strictly on the east coast and second year we did west we did like the whole country we we crossed the country with our cars so yeah we covered like everything in Canada last year so that's tight. And so, so that injury, that elbow injury, that was your, that was that year one of filming. No, it was at year two. So it was like last oh, March. Wow. It was like last March. Yeah. It was yeah. like at the end of filming for the movie and I just blew my elbow. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I can't help but notice, but like in that clip, you're not wearing a helmet. No, no. And so so what, yeah. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, honestly, I've been meaning to get a decent helmet. As stupid of a, an excuse that is, um, I've been trying to get a fucking hockey helmet because I've been looking at like technology. Like I've been doing like lots of research on concussions and like ski helmets are pretty good, but like I feel like 
maybe other sports put more money into concussion research. So I might try to get a hockey helmet is my plan. Um, my helmet is absolutely cracked. I hit my head pretty good with it. So I need to get another one. Helmet sponsors that are listening to this. I'm looking for some help into making helmets cool again. Cause yeah. I'm obviously not succeeding in this clip to make <laughs> elements cool again. Yeah. So, I mean, we could go over um, some time stamps that I wrote down. There's a couple yeah, clips that sure. stood out to me. Some of them, I actually didn't, I, I just wrote them down. I didn't even, I should have written down my thoughts of them. Some of them, I just thought they were tight. This one, I just think is tight. Look at this. Yeah. This 50-50 transfer to the down rail. Yeah, that spot is a spot that many boarders have hit uh, in Ontario, and we just found it because we stopped at that town for the for the night, and it was it was there. And Dylan Ojo, I don't know if you know who it is uh, the border in huh. that spot like a while ago, and that shit was fire. It's always fire. So shout out to Ojo. Uh, yeah so you guys have no problem hitting hitting spots that that are like either considered classics or have already been hit before like you guys don't have any issues with that um it it depends like i honestly it depends what ends up making the cut like i think i think i like when skiers hit snowboard spots so i don't may correct me if i'm wrong like this street skiing culture is like very like it's very much niche and like i've seen a lot of street ski movies but i i'm sure i'm missing some but that like transfer you mentioned pretty sure it's only snowboarders that have hit it like i've never seen someone hit it on skis so like i like doing that like it's ski spot like snowboard spots on skis but yeah. like and like the thing with psychoactive is we didn't use winches either so like I, we've been trying to use like only like natural speed if that makes sense i think we have two but two or three bungee shots in there but that's pretty much it mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i mean i don't i don't make the rules so i don't think it's an issue hitting the it's hitting the same spots i guess the only issue could be same spot same trick different movie then it, everyone be like bro we've seen we've literally seen that shot before but i think i, I, I agree with that like I, yeah i'm not for i'm just i'm a big fan of snowboard movies and i think i think it's legal to do the same <laughs> trick i also love to do the same trick as snowboarders like on that shot i do the same even though it's probably harder on a snowboard Dylan yeah. did 52 front board. I do 52 board. Yeah. Board slide, you know. So yeah. it's like I love to do that stuff. Same trick on skis. I don't know if that's I don't think I don't think that goes personally, but you mm -hmm. know, I like you said, we don't make the rules. I yeah. there's just stuff that, that like I appreciate when people push it instead of like just doing it again, you know, like it's and I I'm very hard on myself when I ski street. Like there's some shots in this I'm already like not too happy about. So like I like people to be hard on themselves when they ski street. Seriously, obviously, you know. It's all like is it are you trying to make this like, like a professional thing or are you just making this for fun with your friends? I think it's fine to redo a tricks if you're just skiing with your friends in the streets, like I think it scares a lot of people that like, oh, yeah, I can't do the same thing as someone else, but mm -hmm. it really shouldn't. If if you're not trying to make something like super professional, then I don't think it matters. Yeah, I think there's definitely like what you said, like some crews and even some well-known ones, seems like they just do it. You know, they just they get the shot regardless of how it looks. It gets in the movie because it's like whatever. And then there's some people and crews including this movie that take it to the next level and like approach it with a different seriousness like you guys are definitely taking it serious so were there some shots i mean we went over one that I, that did make the cut but were there some shots that you weren't happy with that were still gnarly and you're like nah that's it's not going in 
Um, there's a few, honestly, not that many, uh, but just like a lot of it. Like we were, there's a few shots that didn't make the cut because of the filming. A few shots mm. that didn't make the cut because of like an arm flap. But everyone that makes a street video, I'm sure relates to what I'm saying right now. Like there's some like you want it to be like everything you shot because you put so much work into it, but. Honestly, we cut like I would say forty percent of the footage down. Yeah. For this to like be eighteen minutes, like there's the and like maybe have the angles. You know, we always add a lot of angles and we try to cut it as much as possible. So yeah, you always end up with shit you you won't use. You know. Yeah. So here's here's the next one I have. I love this shot. Yeah, Oscar. (laughs) This spot is wild, bro. And and it's not not even technical. It's literally just dropping in on a huge industrial AC unit. So what was the spot selection like for that one? Like who even even thought that one up? Well, Oscar, Oski Tobogan is um, skiing that spot. And Oscar... That's in my hometown in Sherbrooke. And um, Oscar just saw that spot behind the mall. And, and like, he was like, oh, let me climb up there and just hit it. And that was, that's a one, one and done, I would call it. He, he just, that's the one try he did it. And that was it. I It's so aesthetic. Like this shot, I, I'm really stoked on how it came out. It's just... <laughs> I mean, there's not much to say, but it's just an, it's just awesome, dude. It's like, uh, I don't know. It, this shot honestly reminds me of a skate, like a skate video, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We've been like, I mean, I'm sure Oscar can relate. Like all the homies from jet skis have been like putting in like good work in the streets. And it's been like very inspiring to see them like do their shit. Like Sid is a big inspiration for me. Sid, the uh, He's from, is it Newfoundland or, but whatever. Sid's from the east coast of Canada, and mm. he's the Omi and does a lot of drops like that. Um, I don't know if you you've seen the Chromat video. Um, I would have to look it up, but it, did, it get, yeah. did it drop this fall? It dropped last winter. Okay. Uh, this yeah, winter, I'd have to we up. just had the winter before and. Uh, they do lots of drops like that just like go down shit you know and <laughs> it's been very like fun to do it like we've been do- trying to do a little bit more of it and it's it's super fun to actually execute so yeah yeah no cool i mean we can we can go on on with this as long as we want i i just you know it's fun rewatching the movie uh 440 this backyard shot man switch in and then it's you know it's got like the slight waterfall feature and it's just it's basically just a switch on switch out with the down flat down but that's i i love the setting of it like that uh kind of farmhouse that just reminds me of the east coast like all this all these little farm towns yeah that's on the east coast indeed yeah 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 for sure dude no i like that's pretty pretty um it's like five hours from montreal that's pretty far east and it's like it's super nice down in a hill like towards the, the ocean so it's like super steep bunch of rails so mm-hmm. that town was eating for sure yeah, yeah we love we love this stuff so those are kind of my fanboy shots but let's see this is where you know we had actually some viewer questions about this right here not about the not about the blunt. Let's see. Should be okay. It's coming up right here, man. The mirror shot, the mirror urban shot. Raf Diaz submitted a viewer question about it. I also wrote it down. What was up with the use of the mirrors throughout the movie? So the mirrors was like an idea I had because I this. Polish painter called Zizla Bigzinski, and I'm sure I'm butchering his name, but he used to paint these super like hell, hell-ish like, like 
apocalypse painting and before he did all that like i know him because of these paintings and i just was researching the guy and i saw he used to take photographs like he used to be a photographer and i do lots of 35 millimeter like analog photography so i started looking into his stuff and he used mirrors a lot to uh, create like illusions since he couldn't just like do it with laptops and and shit back then so he used mirrors to try to make these crazy frames that would make no sense and i just thought yo what if i try to do a little bit of that for street skiing it obviously didn't work as well as i was hoping for um i had like big big hopes but it's so fucking hard to make happen like i'm super happy about what we got but it was definitely a process and we learned a lot to <laughs> A lot of a lot of stuff with these mirrors. So I yeah, thought... like it was just uh it was just like a way to make it like a little bit uncomfortable and unsettling, but nothing nothing more than that, I would say. I think it worked, and this is the one that blew me away right here. The mirror it's coming up. It was the mirror that's used to get just the down shot. Right there, man. Yeah. That was like that's like that's crazy. And so <laughs> how did you approach that? Like did you when you showed up to that spot, did you have that in mind? Or did you come up with the mirror idea after like he was already seshing? No, this spot was just like it had been a few days since I got a clip and I was just trying to fucking get a clip. Some like people this key street will know what I'm talking about. You some day some weeks, man, you can't get a clip and it just gets in your head. So I saw this like nice little down kink. I don't know what it is, honestly. But um, and then we just set up the mirror. I, I honestly the mirror. I just was like, let's try to capture the kink from there. But because I didn't want to do anything crazy on the actual rail, so we tried to make it look nice with the mirror for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I love that. And I think I had a couple yeah. other. I had a couple other shots written down with the mirrors. I think you guys used one like like towards the end of the movie let's see if i got this right oh yeah it was just like the reflection it was using the re it was using the reflections more so and then there's the one in the like right at in the intro obviously so yeah so i like that what was the name of that uh that artist again the music the the, 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 mirror, one, the mirror the mirror yeah the mirror artist it's wait i have a pen i'll write it down <clears throat> okay, so now we'll resume recording where we left off. Yeah. We figured out the name. It is very hard to pronounce, but if you're watching the video, here's if what you, here's what Rudy was talking Polish, about. If you're Polish, I'm sorry. I wish I could pronounce it. But yeah, um, yeah. If you write maybe photography, you'll get more good results because basically mm -hmm. what I looked at was his photography and yeah. Um, Yes, so lots of I exactly this one I loved it. This one with the eye. Yeah, this one with the eye I, I really loved. And I was I've never I'd never seen anything like it before. Mm -hmm. Like on photo, you know. Like the this one is actually the right one, yeah. Yeah. Like this is really in, interesting. So I I thought like if I could try to do this same, like we tried to do it at night, it was like quasi impossible like we couldn't do it because we tried to work with shadows and whatnot and it wouldn't work so it's definitely like it would have been good to do it with someone that's like an expert at working like that but I didn't have enough experience to make it look uh, as crazy it, this has so much potential you know uh, yeah yeah it's crazy. hey i think i think what you guys kept <clears throat> what you guys kept because I'm sure you guys cut out some of the stuff that just didn't yeah. work. But I think oh, what you guys kept turned out great. You know, and, and that and that first one that I pulled up, I think it's just like lip on, back to out, if I yeah. remember correctly. That yeah. one turned out so clean. And just yeah. so crisp. Yeah, look at yeah. that. That's great. And this like see you were talking about like tricks that had already been done like that rails are classic and like b dog did that but front slide so he did leave front slide back to 
mm-hmm. all that shit. So we were just uh, my buddy Will did like a a few tricks on that reel, but I was just skiing it for fun after I had filmed them. So and it ended up making the cut just because it the shot, like you said, looks super nice. Yeah, we were happy about it for sure. And so I actually pulled it up before while we were looking at the other reflection clip, but the closer. Yes, sir. Yeah, this shot. So could you walk us through this one? Was this you hitting this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to tell because your facial hair changes lengths so fre- yeah. <laughs> so frequently. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, for the people that haven't seen it, definitely go check it out. But it's like uh, fifty-fifty, and then gap to a huge down, flat down. Yeah, and that's yeah. and it feels small putting it that way because it's it feels bigger than that. So like yeah, what you want to walk us through that? Uh, that is the closer. I mean, it's a spot in my hometown in Sherbrooke that I had been looking at for a few years and just didn't like step up to it. It's pretty far, and I just didn't want to get fucked. Like the kink is pretty sticky and all, and I'd seen some borders do the higher step Mm -hmm. and like alling over the like edge of the first down and like 50 50 and i was like if i do the lower step and i come in fast as fuck i can just like boost it and then hit the kink and that's what i did and i don't know like the way we filmed it and all like that's the type of spot we definitely like strive to hit in the future like we love stuff with like ledges and rails in one spot like that's not a ledge per se but mm-hmm. i try to keep it from concrete to rail you know and most of the stuff that's like this is like super satisfying to ski it's not like too dangerous so it doesn't feel like we're about to fucking kill ourselves and uh because i'm not into like winching myself down a building i'm like not up for that stuff so these types of spots is definitely what i'm what i like to do it was it was a great day yeah it was a great day i don't know i don't know what else to say about it it was like no. such a good day yeah and my little brother was there and dude no everything was sick yeah that's just it's such a banger clip so i mean you got do you have anything uh any time stamps in particular to you that's that stand out um honestly at 6 50 I think it's six thirty. I wrote six thirty. Yeah, that rail in Montreal. My buddy Loic, the guy that's skiing right here, mm-hmm. he's he does that rail, and I was that was like oh. one of the best days we had that that second year filming. He just. Did he back? Was, like uh, well, a, a little bit, but a little bit. Yeah, not intentional. No, 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 but just lays that thing and he was so happy, dude. It's been that's one of my good buddies from from high school and it's been good to like yeah, like ski with my homies and just make this shit like as 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 true to what we like to see, you know, as as we can. It's been like good to be able to not just like watch ski content but create it too and yeah, we're yeah. really happy about it. Yeah. That's awesome. Like getting to reconnect with him. Were you guys yeah. always? Did you guys always connect through skiing, or was or is that something that's oh like yeah new? Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's just it's just it's been super nice to like. That's one of my buddies from high school. The only will will that's in the film as well is my one of my first buddies in Whistler. So it's been like really cool to just like ski with like my close close friends and just make this movie like feel the way i wanted and i don't Mm -hmm. every everything kind of fell into place like the boys went hard too like way harder than i thought they would so yeah yeah that's a that's that's a great one you got anything you got any other ones that stood out um honestly not really because you went over them like it was the drop of oscar and then the pad to dfd will does a cool reel at 1008 yeah We'll pull that up. Ten oh eight. It's a spot Clayton Villa ate back in the day, and Will just wanted to lace it, and it's such a cool looking rail. 
yeah down flat down and then like a c rail to a close out it's pretty sick <laughs> yeah and that's what's super hard to do in Montreal because of security like it's in a park where they don't let you stay but Will's dad used to work somewhere in Montreal city so we had his truck and I think we were lucky that day it was nice yeah that's yeah. tight well I'm glad yeah, I'm glad we did that we tried the video element hopefully it worked we'll see how it ends up with the recording but I guess we'll yeah, see with the audio and shit like we'll yeah. see <laughs> so um I just got a few few wrap-up questions we'll do some v- viewer questions too so yeah when did sensor sense excuse me when did <laughs> sensorial quartet come into the fold because it seems like it was going on at the same time that you guys were filming is that right yeah 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 so first thing i should not have named it like that it seems way too hard to pronounce you're not the only one eating it's like i <laughs> i went way too crazy with the name um, but yeah the sensorial quartet was like it started the first year we filmed for Psychoactive, so we just, um, for our contracts, it felt good for companies for us to release like some content as we were filming for these bigger projects. So we were like, park skiing is like easy for us to record. And we just did a few episodes of that. And it's been well received. Like people in Canada love that. And I'm super happy about how it looks like. I love that our video was like feel good even a few years after like they're really nice so all i wanted is just to put some content online and we just tried to make these little park videos and the first year was really nice and goyaki's been helping us a lot so Mm -hmm. on the west coast we've been skiing at mount seymour and that was fun mount seymour is the shit so yeah probably do some more episodes this year over there that's tight yeah, yeah so yeah. i may give something else for people to add to their watch list so if they haven't seen it they should definitely check out simple they should check out sensorial quartet and of course psychoactive because that's what we're here talking about so um let's get into some of the viewer questions and then yeah. we will get you out of here so the first of the viewer questions what is your hot take that you have about skiing that's a good one i wish i thought of that before um my hot take man my hot take is no one has yet made a nice bow edit i can't watch these fucking edits i'm so sorry you guys that's a hard one if people are gonna shit on me for this but Okay, let me explain is... myself. Let me explain myself. Um, that is so funny, bro. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. Let, let me explain myself. I'm sorry, guys. It's, I think I've seen a lot of, like, I like a lot of the snowboard videos. The power snowboard videos are always so fucking good for some reason. And, like, man, the Vans videos for the, from the last, like, three years, the, everything that's, like, power-related is very watchable. Like, I love all of it. It's very aesthetic. But, man, some skiers cannot film for the love of God. And, yeah, like, I just wish we could have more power ski content that's, like, great. Because, I mean, I know I, I don't watch a lot of power ski content, so... Don't come at me too hard, but yeah. What I've seen, yeah, I just I just feel like someone there's space for someone to fucking pop off on in that scene. Like there's no one doing it so good that like, you know, there's some there's space for someone to like fill up that space that's not taken because we need someone that knows what they're doing up there, cause yeah. They're filming, I think is too yeah, I wish someone filmed with a 16 millimeter in the pow is what I feel. Yeah. Yeah. That is so funny, bro. Love that. <laughs> I love like someone that actually you know, what that was actually hot. I, yeah, so, exactly. Something that's not safe. So I want to ask you, what what are your thoughts now on like the helmet debate? Because people are saying obviously a 
clips look better without a helmet. It just looks cooler. There's no way around it. But there's but being you know having brain damage is also like not cool. No, it's cool. Yeah, at, no, all. It's cool at all. Yeah. So what's the balance for that for you? Like I said earlier, like I'm not best place to, and that's why I didn't want to make a documentary or like tell anyone how they should deal with themselves because I don't wear my helmet all the time at all. Like people that ski with me every day knows, like mm. it still kills my girlfriend when I don't wear one. But um, I think it's to like manage your risk. Like honestly, you know when you're trying something you're less at ease with and like. I think it's very important to carry your I'm not into back protectors and all that and like ailments is pretty much bare minimum if you want to try something that you might get hurt you know like I'm at this point in my ski like life that I know when I'm gonna fall and when I'm not like there's some shit there's no way I'm gonna fall and there's obviously like accidents happen I know but so sometimes I won't wear my helmet but that's a risk I'm willing to take and I think it's for everyone to take the decision but i think it's important to have a helmet when you're trying something let's just put it that way mm -hmm. yeah I, when you're pushing your boundaries safe to say. yeah i think that's pretty safe to say like and obviously if you're learning like skiing in general i i wore a helmet my old childhood it's like i stopped wearing a helmet when i was like 20 21 like sometimes i wouldn't wear it so mm -hmm. it is yeah. what it is but all right. Um, yeah. So we will go into, let's see, Raph already got his question in with the mirrors. Let's do concrete knees. Do you think this project would have had the same success with any other filmer involved? I don't know. I don't know what he means by that. But, yeah. You know. It is interesting phrasing. I think, like, do you think that having the filmers that you had were, like, integral to the vision of the of the movie like you needed so these filmers for this for the vision you were going for i think so like Etienne and tristan both did like filming was a big part of this like we wanted it to be like very well filmed and like it's not perfect by any means but we're really happy about how it came out and no i think with the filmers i had like it had the right let me say it like this it had the right percentage of like exactly what we wanted and like happy accidents like a lot of it was like really just like it fell into place like i really like the, the it, it feels like us you know like if you were with us these two years it feels like that movie for sure so mm -hmm. i'm happy about it yeah that's tight um all right, so now we can get to some more of the rapid fire ones. DT sauce, what skis do you ride? Uh, the moment I ride the O N T P Jeffrey One O Twos, and I love them. They're yeah. sick. Yeah, Probably. my my big mountain ski. It's yeah, cool. yeah. The best O N Three P graphic of all time was the uh it was like around like 2012 it was the uh the one with the money i forget i forget the name the of the filthy rich i think the filthy like, rich that one was so like the, sick uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just oh, forget i gotta give that that top sheet props that was so sick um all right brett do you prefer riding whistler or the smaller mountains in your area um that's a tough one dude like I would say equally, like, Whistler is just so nice, like, I would have to say Whistler, but mm -hmm. honestly, like, I would say Seymour before Whistler, like, this little resort on the, on the coast, like, it's super nice, the view, like, with the ocean, and you can ski at night and shit, and mm -hmm. it's smaller, so I love that, but skiing back home was always fun like i always love to go back home and just like ski my little resorts but the west coast is just too good man it's it's yeah. totally different so i would have to see the west coast i would have to see the west coast all right yeah. a lot of people threw in either or questions so we'll do another one jed urban or resort urban there's just like i love i love resort skiing but urban there's just so much like 
potential for growth like i see myself trying new shit like and from different like in different ways every season like urban skiing and at least for now right like uh Mm-hmm. we'll see as i as i get older but yeah urban skiing i just i've really like i've really found like a passion for just like being out there with my homies and chill outside like not ski a whole lot it's a whole lot of like a whole lot of organization and like fucking around and it's it's super fun dude it's super fun yeah well ties right into the next one skiing chutney favorite street spot my favorite street spot like of all time yeah it's gotta be the red ledge i it's not my favorite street spot but it everybody's gonna go like ski at once it's like so fun it's like the most fun i've had like first time i went to it it actually i got booked pretty bad but uh it's a super super fun spot yeah there was there ever is there any word on why it's not the red ledge anymore and why it's it's gray like is there any you know canadian insight into that actually it's red again (laughs) actually it's red again uh some homies i can't see but some homies went and painted it again uh red i think it just was gray because the city of quebec just had to paint it and they chose gray and that was it yeah but recently it got painted red again so yeah we're really happy about it <laughs> that's so tight so it was the red yeah. what because people were calling it for a while the gray the, the gray ledge it? yeah they would yeah. call it the red now they say the red now gray ledge so it's the it's yeah. the gray now red ledge <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, exactly. Stupid. All right, uh, Adam, what's your favorite spot in Psychoactive specifically? Um, that's a good one. My favorite spot in Psychoactive. It's gotta be the. How can I? Which one? Wait a second. I think it is. Oh, skis drop like you mentioned the like <laughs> vent either that or either that or the pad to dfd would be my favorite ones yeah those yeah. are just awesome <laughs> yeah um what spot so ryan <clears throat> excuse me so ryan asks uh what street what's the street sh- excuse me Jeez, it's, it's kind of a tongue twister <laughs> what's the street shot that took the longest to get um, the longest battle, I think it was probably Loic's like hop hop rail. Yeah, the one we were talking Montreal, about. Montreal, yeah. the one we were talking about earlier at the uh, six thirty. It took like a few hours, and that's why he's like so happy about it. That's probably the longest one, honestly, because one one from year one, one of the hits from year one we spent a few hours i think it was 230 hits and it didn't make the cut the same guy loic oh really That's yeah terrible. yeah so when we put in work he, he's he's a good skier <laughs> yeah so yeah that was the that was the one for sure yeah what's the spot that took you the longest for me it was huh it was the a shot that didn't make the cut either i did like this like gap to roof to gap to down rail on the house and i just like the ike was fucking so tiring it was like a hike for natural speed and i did probably like three hours two hours three hours something like that and uh I managed to grind the rail, but I didn't like how I slid and it didn't make the cut, but mm-hmm. that was the longest, like that didn't make the cut, but what made the cut, I would say, uh, probably the kink rail. It's just after the, the one you mentioned, like the pole jam to down rail. Yeah. It's just after that, the first section, that one took me like two, two hours, but like a solid eye kink, so. Mm-hmm. about like 70 tries 
Yeah. Jesus, man. 60, 60 tries, 70 tries, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Holden, where will you be filming Street this season? And then somebody else followed it up with John Asta. Do you plan to film any Street in America in the near future? So I don't know if that ties into Holden's question, but yeah, yeah where, where are you guys filming coming up? So this season we're filming mainly in BC. Uh, we're going to be staying like on the West Coast and try to really like deal with all that West Coast stuff because there's like quite a lot of spots, but it's doable to do like most of it in one season. So we're going to stay BC, Calgary area. And then uh, season after that, we're going to be on the East Coast a little more. Uh, we might head to the States if... Portland or Seattle get some snow because we're really close and uh, those cities usually don't get snow so this weekend I'm supposed to be in Vancouver we're supposed to get some snow so we already did one trip to Vancouver this year so we're supposed to get another one in and these coastal cities are so nice to ski because it's it hasn't been skied a lot so there's a lot of untouched spots and yeah it's been good to ski out here so yeah we're gonna try to like stay in bc and and get the most of it and yeah honestly if you went down if you went down to seattle and like portland you guys could probably get away with a lot because it seems yeah. like it seems like it's anything goes in those cities right now especially yeah. like i i I haven't been to seattle yet but i saw portland firsthand and i think a couple guys skiing a rail is like the least of their concerns right now so yeah exactly it could be tight. So, yeah yeah vancouver is the same but we haven't had any issues there so yeah no we're we're out for these cities because it's big cities with lots of end rails that hasn't that haven't been touched so um yeah we're right that's tight so before we get to the last of your question, I wanted to ask something that I forgot to ask. Um, yeah, yeah, for how sure. did love? How did level one get involved with this? Okay, so basically, level one, we are in contact because of Connor. Connor Smith is mm -hmm. like um, he's in charge of a lot of stuff. I can't, I don't know what his title is, but yeah, Connor is a good old me of me and Tristan. We filmed together like like the year before he started working for level one quite a lot so we just like we were connor had like heard that we were making psychoactive and just proposed to host it on the level one channel and it just like made sense for everyone to work together and make that happen for us it was like super helpful for reach and for them it was like super nice to have like an all urban Mike, sorry, <laughs> it's okay, dude. Yeah, and all urban uh, video. Connor's just a big old me, and yeah, it's been nice. Like they've been helping with like the premieres and shit, and we did the level one festival and all. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, so it was more than them just hosting it. Like they were offering support, like for the production oh, yeah. itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like nothing really came from them in terms of like editing, production of the video and anything, but they helped with like everything that's like social media related, I would say. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, definitely like super nice to have like a brand like level one backing us and supporting us, you know. So yeah. Yeah. Really Absolutely. happy about that. All right, last of your question, Scott Belkman, what's your plans for the future? Are you guys doing any more movies coming up? Like, what's what you guys working with? So, yeah, we're working on a new movie. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be a year or a two-year project yet, but um, I think it's going to be a two-year project. And uh, we're working on ON3P6 as well, so we'll see where that goes and what comes out when but uh yeah we're really happy about like this upcoming season we're definitely going to shoot street for at least two more seasons we're see we're going to see how this season goes but yeah like the plan is to just like shoot urban the next two years and then probably go to europe to shoot some afterwards but that's in a long time so we'll see yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's all I have. Uh, you want to plug any, uh, oh, 
something that we did skip over. This is a good time to mention it. Let's plug your Instagram. R.I.P. The old Instagram. Yeah. Any word about what happened to that? You just got they took you down for no Man, reason. Man, I wish I had like an actual reason. Like they booted me and. I never heard of like at first it just came in like I couldn't log in my account like I opened my phone and you know it just wouldn't work and uh, it said it was going to get reviewed and in 24 hours was going to get an answer and within 24 hours my my foot my page just didn't exist anymore and I have no clue what happened like it happened to one of our homies in in Portland that Tristan knows and he had 420 in his name as well. So we think that maybe that's related with it, but that doesn't make sense to me. Like I didn't violate any like user guidelines, they call them, because mm -hmm. I could still check that out and it said you're good, you didn't violate anything. So I'm like, yeah, I don't know what happened, but lost the account. It's not the biggest deal, honestly. Like I started another one and yeah, it's been like going pretty well. And I mean, here in Whistler and like in Canada in general like I've come to realize it's just so crazy like the amount of like real relationships I've like built around skiing like everybody around here like knows me and I know everyone like it's such a small world you know like my Instagram was a good thing but it's it's good to start fresh in a way you know yeah totally so what is the new Instagram handle the new Instagram handle is at Psycho Skier. So uh, that's it for now. I just like made that handle when I lost the other one, like quick, quick, since I had Psychoactive coming out. I, Psycho Skier is the, the handle I took, but I'll probably change it for something more personal by the end of this year or something. Uh, I'm, I've been thinking on it, but yeah. Yeah. That's it for now. Yeah, I don't know, man. Psycho Skier is a pretty good one. Yeah, some people like it. I don't personally yeah. like it a lot, but yeah, yeah, that's all right. So we'll I'll try to update it when you uh, when you get the new one. So check him yeah, out on there. Sure. Check out Psychoactive on uh on Level One's YouTube page, probably on New Schoolers as well. And Rudy, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for sticking thank in there. You, I have my mic falling all over me. We're trying the new video thing. Everyone's getting a face reveal for both of us pretty much. So yeah. So this was an episode trying new stuff. I appreciate you sticking with it. And yeah, definitely thank you for your time as well. Yo, thank you for the interview. It was super nice to chat with you. And we'll do this again for sure. Absolutely.